Uh, it is an unauthorized biography of Aaron Rodgers, Ian O'Connor, sports writer, New York Times bestselling author, and the new book is Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. Why Aaron Rodgers? Well, it starts with uh, Vince Lombardi. Uh, Vince Lombardi coached my high school. It was the only head coaching job he ever had before the Green Bay Packers. And uh, he lived eight houses away from me in Englewood, New Jersey. And so I was always fascinated by the Packer mystique and thought I had a Packers book inside of me. So I guess this is the one. But Aaron, from a distance, I always found him to be compelling, mysterious, intriguing. He got traded into my backyard. I was working on a LeBron James bio and I pivoted away from it to Aaron because I I think he's a fascinating character. And I thought the marriage of him and this Charlie Brown franchise in New York would make for a great story. It so far (laughs) hasn't been so great. We'll see how it plays out this year, but that's why I took the project on. How do you avoid preconceived opinions, notions of Aaron Rodgers? It's not easy, but I was determined to go into this open-minded. And I think some of his friends early on, I ended up talking to 250 people. As Aaron said, I reached out to 500 and half called me back. That's about right. And a lot of his friends, I think early on and close associates were concerned that I had an agenda that frankly, And one of his friends told me this, that you're a media guy from New York, probably liberal, looking to destroy Aaron in this book. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I had absolutely no agenda whatsoever. And I wanted to be open minded about the vaccine, his stance on that and and everything else, including the conspiracy theories. And so I think I wore him down over time. And that's the reason that he agreed to sit down with me at his home in Malibu. Unauthorized versus authorized. How different would this book be if it was authorized? Well, when it's authorized, Dan, obviously it's that subject's truth as opposed to the truth or the pure truth. And I think that unauthorized, a lot of people, readers think it's a dirty word, like it suggests a a trash book. It's really a badge of honor. I think it's closer to a pure form of journalism. And the ideal is unauthorized biography with the subject's cooperation. With Aaron, I didn't get full cooperation. That would have required 15 to 20 hours. I got two hours with him at the end of the process to check all of my facts. And he did. He was very candid and thoughtful and engaging at his home on the Pacific Ocean. It was a great backyard setting for those two hours. But he made the book better. And I very much appreciate that. I'm trying to figure this out because Is he leading us to believe that he wants to be left alone, do his own thing, but then still enjoys the spotlight? I think he wants to be talked about. I think he always has. And I I think he leans into it now. He back in August of 21, those four words, yeah, I've been immunized. That turned him into a villain. Before then, he was considered one of the more socially aware athletes in sports. He was celebrated by the same journalist who then turned on him after the truth came out about his unvaccinated status. And I think after that, he decided to really dig in. And if the media wanted to go to war with him, he would be a willing participant in that war. But I think at the end of the day, he likes creating news cycles. He can do it just rolling out of bed. I've rarely seen an athlete who could uh, command the spotlight the way he can. It's amazing that here we have a Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes going for a three-peat And Aaron Rodgers, who hasn't been to the Super Bowl in a long time, is still by far the most talked about person in the league. And that's really uh, a major reason why I decided to do this book. Does he care what the public public thinks of him? He's human, so he cares. He does. And he's admitted uh, to me, uh, at least in one answer, that it does hurt uh, when he gets criticized. But... He's a fearless public speaker. I do, on a certain level, give him a lot of credit for that because I'm not, and I think most people aren't. And he's willing to sometimes, unfortunately, defend indefensible positions on things. But uh, yeah, I I think the criticism has hurt him. And I think he was hurt after those uh, four words, yeah, I've been immunized, when he felt that he had some media allies who weren't there for him. He thought he would get some support and some of those allies would rush to his side, and that did not happen. So, yeah, he bleeds, too, and I think that he he tries to do a good job of not showing that, but it's there. He's Ian O'Connor. The book is Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. Any similarities with other people you've profiled with Coach K, Bill Belichick, Derek Jeter, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus? 
Good question, Dan. I think the one similarity is, and that's why I was surprised he admitted to me he made a mistake with his COVID stance back uh, in 2021, is that they don't admit mistakes, these greats, coaches and athletes. They don't admit weakness and faults and errors, and they never say, I'm sorry. And I've come to believe the reason is because they fear that weakness will follow them into the competitive arena and compromise their chances of, of winning and winning at a at a big time level and becoming an all time great. And I think I, really when Aaron admitted to me he made a mistake and wishes he had a mulligan on his not his stance because he's still anti vaccine, but just the way he did it and didn't tell his truth at the time, which was he was allergic to an ingredient in Pfizer and Moderna and concerned about Johnson and Johnson side effects. I said, why didn't you just say that? And he says, yeah, I should have said it. It was a mistake. But when you admit fault, guys like Aaron Rodgers, Coach K, Derek Jeter, Belichick, when's the last time you heard any of them say, I'm sorry about anything? And I really think it comes down to they think it will hurt them in competition, and that's why they don't do it. If you gave Rodgers a do-over, a mulligan of going to the Jets or the Jets bringing Aaron Rodgers in, does anybody have a different opinion on that, either side? No, I, I think Aaron would still do it. I think the Jets would still do it. Of course, after this season, if they have a losing season or he's hurt again, I think the answer would, would be different. But Aaron was no longer wanted in Green Bay. He knew that. Effectively, that was a firing, even though he pushed for the trade. He saw this great opportunity, Dan, in New York to, if he wins a ring for a franchise in the big city that has not been to the Super Bowl since January of 69, that's going to feel like three rings. And it's going to be Messier in 94 for the Rangers on steroids. And I think looking at Brady with seven rings and Aaron with one, he can't close that gap. But if he wins the big one for the Jets, it's going to feel like he really did close that gap. And I think he saw that as a great opportunity. And I agree with him. I wonder about his career, how he views it, because he's often referred to as the most talented quarterback or maybe the one or two most talented quarterbacks to ever play the game, but he has won Super Bowl. Has it been a disappointment to him in what he's accomplished, even though he's been league MVP quite a few times? And I think the league MVPs helps a little bit, and he, he did win more of those than Tom Brady, but he that's not what people count. They count the rings, and he's down six to the guy he will always be compared against, and that hurts. But he didn't have Belichick, arguably the greatest coach of all time. He didn't have Josh McDaniels, the best offensive coordinator in the league, and he didn't have that Patriot Way support system. There are people who believe that Aaron would have won three, four, five, maybe six rings with uh, the Patriots in the same situation Brady was in. Uh, special teams and defense and coaching were factors in some of those bitter playoff defeats. If you look at particularly the period, Dan, from 2013 through 16, those four seasons of lost postseason opportunities, Aaron made big, sometimes magical, sudden death plays in each of those seasons, and there's nothing but failure in the box score. So I do think his 11-10 and 10 postseason record can be a little misleading, but at the end of the day, he's barely over 500 in the playoffs, and he can't really run away from that. You Let me go back to you saying that he got fired by the Packers. Did he get himself fired? Like, it's, it's one thing that, you know, the franchise is going to turn on you, but it felt like they were at a point of no return that they had to do that. Well, he ended up, it was a very similar situation to Brett Favre, ironically enough, and Aaron was on the good side of that one and now on the bad side of the franchise wanting to turn it over to Jordan Love. And I think that they always had later in his career, the upside and the downside of employing Aaron Rodgers, but the downside got greater in that you had him, he wanted more uh, personnel say and influence and decisions. And that's not really the Packer way. I think they gave him a little bit more late in his career, but not enough. And then suddenly he's not making the playoffs. That last year, he looked like a diminished player, misses the playoffs. So we're not getting the upside. When Aaron's healthy, we're, we're getting in the playoffs basically every year. So they wanted to move on. He knew that. And again, with the Jets, it was a great opportunity. Hey, go to the big city. I'm coming from the smallest market in the NFL. Let me go to the biggest and try to pull off something that would be pretty iconic. 
And uh, so it was both parties knew they had to have this divorce. But deep down, he's hurt by that. And people close to him told me that. And so uh, ideally, if he could reach the Super Bowl, I think the team he would want to face and beat is the Green Bay Packers for obvious reasons. What was the one question that you wanted an answer to? Family estrangement. And he did address some of that on the record. And I appreciated that because he didn't owe me an answer to that question. But it's gone on now for nearly 10 years. And it's a complicated issue. There's not one defined moment, Dan, or issue that separated this family. But I I was happy that he agreed to address that and also address that he his father told me that they had a hug last year at Lake Tahoe at the Celebrity Golf Tournament. And Aaron came over in the middle of his Saturday round, saw his father in the crowd and gave him a hug and said, I love you. And Ed Rogers was crying and it was an emotional moment. It only lasted about 30 seconds, but it meant something to both men. Aaron wanted to be his father. His father was his idol when he was growing up. And so Aaron told me for the book, and this is the first time he's ever said this publicly, he wants to have a relationship with a family member, this being his father. And so hopefully that happens. And I think the road to family reconciliation will run through Ed Rogers. And let's hope it happens sooner rather than later. If you had to predict, what is Aaron Rodgers doing after he's done playing? I think he'll be one of the best analysts in a network booth ever. And I know he says he doesn't really have interest in that, but I, when he's talking football, there's nobody like him. I think he's even better at it or would be than Brady and, and, and Peyton Manning. He's a computer. Uh, when he's talking football, it's mesmerizing. And I think he would be unbelievable at it. And I don't see another path for him. I don't think politics is the answer. I think he'll stay in football, and that seems to be the, the natural second career for him. Good to talk to you, Ian. Good luck with the book. Thank you. Hey, Dan, my pleasure. Thank you. Ian O'Connor, Out of the Darkness with Aaron Rodgers, and uh, there's a lot in there.